Hello, this is the uh, this is Tim from Class A Leasing. I'm an instructor here at Minnesota Truck and Trailer School. Um, October 16, uh, 2023. There's a new update to the free trip. It's a lot more abbreviated, and uh, also um, with this, they give you a new check-in list right here. So you're only required to talk about the items that are on this list. So anything outside this list, you should know about, but you don't need to talk about. Also, you need to pass the pre-trip before moving on to the road skills test, the backups, and, and on the road. If you want to learn more about this, uh, the pre-trip, you can read uh, in the Minnesota CDL manual sections 10M, pages 189 through 200. What I did right here is I added some stuff. This is for our stuff right here. You're not going to have any red marks um, or any additional marks outside of just crossing things off. So if you're a class B, you'll talk about, you'll do the in vehicle, the light operations check, the front of the vehicle, steering axle inside of the vehicle. If you're class A, you do all of the above here, but you also get the combination vehicle and the trailer and the trailer itself and the rear of the trailer. So starting with you can go in any type of order if you want to go. Uh, you don't need to go in this exact order. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the front of the vehicle, the engine area, starting with the lenses. So here I'm going to inspect the lenses on both sides for my headlights right here, and all the running clearance lights up on top, and those on the mirrors. All the lenses are clean and clear, not cracked. They're not loose or missing. There's no missing nuts or bolts at all. There's no loose or missing bulbs at all. Loose or hanging wires or cut wires at all. The headlights and all of the lights and reflectors on top of the cabin and the mirrors are securely mounted, proper color amp. So that takes care of the lenses portion of it. Portion of it. Now we'll do the fluid levels. So what they want to know is they want to know all of the critical fluids that you would check on your track. I will pull from the front of the truck, from the side of the truck, lock it down, flap down. Now we'll do the critical fluids or the fluid levels. So starting with the engine oil right here, I'm going to check this while the engine is off. I'm going to remove this yellow dipstick, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out. It should be above the fill line. If it's low or below that fill line, up here on the top, I'll add oil there. The cap is not loose, not cracked or leaking, securely mounted. The coolant level, I'm gonna check the coolant level right here at this reservoir right here. It should be above this add line, below the max line. If it's low, I'm gonna add it here when the engine's off. The cap is not loose or missing, cracked or leaking. This reservoir is not cracked or leaking. There's no missing nuts or bolts up there at all. No missing nuts or bolts down here at all. No loose or missing hose clamp in this hose right here. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It's not cracked or leaking. Also, the sensor line is plugged in right here. It's not disconnected. There's no corroded, exposed, or loose wires at all. My coolant is at the proper level and it's securely mounted. Okay, my power steering fluid is right here. I'm going to check this while the engine's off on the manual or engine running when, on the automatics. It should be above this cold or min line and below this max or hot line right here. If it's low, I'm gonna add power steering fluid here once more while the engine's running. This cap is not loose or missing, cracked or leaking, or missing nuts or bolts at all, no loose or missing hose clamp at all. This hose right here is connected, it's not cracked or leaking. There's no abrasions, bulbs or cuts here, it's not cracked or leaking. The fluid is at its proper level and the reservoir is securely mounted. So that takes care of the fluid levels. Now, this is a manual. If you were in an automatic, you'd make sure that you would pull the, the red dipstick, you remove that, you check that while the engine's running, uh, remove it, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out, should be above the fill or the end line. If it's below that with the funnel, you would add exactly where you checked it. The line there's not correct or leaking, screw motor. So fluid and air leaks, a lot of it I just covered right now, but we're gonna go over the entire truck. I'm going to smell for burnt plastic or rubber, which might indicate something's loose here. I don't want to smell any burnt rubber or plastic. 
All these hoses are securely connected into where they need to be connected in up here. They go down to the air compressor down here. These hoses right here are connected. There's no looser missing hose clamps at all here or here at all. The hoses, there's no abrasions, bulges, cuts, not cracked or leaking. Because I have air over here and fluid, I'm going to look for any fluid leaks or drips at all. I'm going to listen for any air leaks around here and up here. I don't want anything puddling or dripping on the ground at all. Then I'm going to walk around the truck and do kind of the same thing. Make sure there's nothing puddling or dripping on the ground there at all. And I'll also come over here too as well to make sure nothing's, nothing's cracked or leaking over here. I listen for air leaks here. I look for any liquid leaks right here. I look for any liquid leaks on the top of the motor or the front of the motor. So you may be asked to point out where the air compressor is. Here on the manual, it's right here. So it's not sagging or loose at all. There's no missing nuts or bolts. It's not crack bent or dented. It's also not leaking at all. I listen for air leaks and I look for any liquid leaks. Water pump. My water pump is on this side and the manual is on the side over here. Although it's not on the list, I want to make sure that when I check it, that the that silver pulley right there, there's no missing nuts or bolts at all. It's not cracked or leaking from there at all. I'll make sure I check that right there. And certainly by the radiator here too as well. Nothing's cracked or leaking or puddling on the ground. So that takes care of the uh, fluid and air leaks. So steering system. Steering system, they're talking about the steering linkage, which is the steering shaft, pitman arm and drag link, and also the steering box and these hoses. So starting with the steering box and these hoses, the steering box is not sagging or loose at all. There's no missing nuts or bolts at all. I might even look to make sure that none of these holes are elongated, which might indicate that things moving up and down at all. The metal's not cracked, but or dented. It's not leaking at all here. Once more, these hoses are connected. There's no loose or missing hose clamps. There's no abrasions, bulges, cuts. These are not cracked or leaking. It's not cracked or leaking here either. The steering shaft, the metal on the steering shaft, the pitman arm and the drag link, it's not cracked, bent, or dented at all. Also right here, there's a... Uh, Properly greased at its joints right here, right here, right here, up here. There's no missing nuts or bolts or shiny exposed threads at all. Here on the manuals, there's no missing nuts or bolts. In this case, no missing castle nut or powder key here. Same over here, no missing nut, castle nut or powder key there. And then I would twist the steering shaft by hand to check for excessive play. There should be no more than 10 degrees of play here or two inches of the steering wheel. How about is the steer tire here? The steer tire here has to be a virgin tread. It cannot be recapped at all. Uh, the tread depth is not worn too thin. It's at least, or dangerously thin. It's at least 430 seconds deep, evenly worn all the way around. There's no thin or flat spots or spots on this tire at all. The sidewalls, I want to put the sidewalls both inside here and outside here to make sure there's no abrasions, boulders or cuts or leaks at all. And then I'm going to read the spec on the tire. My, my tires have to be properly inflated. They can't be under or over inflated. And I'm going to do that with an air gauge here of the valve stem. The valve stem is not loose and the cracks are leaking at all. It's clearly visible. It's not obstructed at all. Dust gaps in place. The tires here to secure the mountain. That takes care of the tires. Now we'll move off to the rims. I would inspect the rims both inside and out to make sure there's no illegal welds at all. I don't want to see any illegal welds at all. It's not warped. It's not crack bent or dented. Also, there's no exposed bead between the tire and the rim. The tire is sealed all the way around. Also, uh, the rim is securely mounted. Lug nuts. I'm going to inspect all these lug nuts. Especially those holes. I don't want to see any elongated holes, which might indicate there's a loose lug nut or this tire's wobbling like it shouldn't be. All these lug nuts are tight to the rim. There's no gap or rust trails at all. None of them are loose or missing at all. There's no shiny threads or metal shavings at all. All these lug nuts are securely mounted. Spring mounts and airbags and shocks. Well, we only have we we only have springs, spring mounts, and shocks. So these are my springs right here, and this is my shock, and these are the spring mounts. I have a spring mount right here, and I go back behind the depth tank over here to make sure that the spring mount's back there, and it is. So starting with the springs right here, the springs are all straight. They're not scissoring one another. They're on top of one another. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented, or rusted through. There's no missing nuts or bolts here. There's no loose or missing U-bolts uh, here at all. There's no missing nuts or shiny exposed threads down there at all. It's tight to the axle here. <coughs> The shock right here is straight. It's not crack bent or dented or leaking at all. There's no missing nuts or bolts up here or down there or shiny exposed threads here or down here. This bracket is tight to the frame. It's not sagging or loose at all. Also, the shock is not leaking. And up here, the rubber bushings are in place on the top and the bottom. They're not worn through or missing at all. The shock is securely mounted. The spring mounts have a spring mount right here. I also have one here in the rear. 
behind the duff tank there. So they're tight to the frame right there and also up here in the front. They're not sagging or loose at all. The metal's not cracked, bent or dented or rusted through at all. There's no missing nuts or bolts at all. And inside here, there's a metal bushing. That metal bushing is not worn through, loose or missing at all. The spring mount up in the front and those in the back are securely mounted. Uh, brake lines or hoses and leaks. So here at the brake hose, the brake hose to the front brake chamber comes, comes from up here to the truck to the brake chamber up here. The first thing I'm going to inspect is to make sure it's tied to the supply line right here and also the brake chamber here. It's not sagging or loose at all. There's no abrasions, bottom of the cuts, it's not cracked or leaking. I'm going to listen for air leaks all along here. There's connection, connection points right here and also up here all along the hose. This ABS line too is securely tied up. It's not dragging or loose to get tangled up on the tire or the ground or anything. It's also plugged in right up here. There's no corroded, exposed, or loose wires at all. The ABS line and brake hose here is a good mounting. Now we got brake contaminants. So I'm going to go inside the rim right here, inspect inside the drum, make sure it's dry, it's free of dirt and debris and rocks. There's no oil or grease at all. Also, there's no sign of any discoloration at all. Any sign of brake fade would cause brake failure. Failure. I don't want that. Also, this lining's at the proper depth. It's at least a quarter inch thick, evenly worn all the way around. They too are dry, no oil or grease. And that takes care of brake contaminants. So side of the vehicle. <laughs> Starting with the side of the vehicle, lens and reflectors right here. So much like we did up front here, I'm going to make sure that this reflector right here and this lens right here, the reflector right here and the lens right here is clean, clear, not cracked at all. The reflector is not loose or missing at all. Same right here, the light right here, the lights and reflectors here and up on the cab are clean and clear, not cracked, they're loose or missing at all. There's no loose or hanging wire, they're missing much bolts at all. Up here in the front, it's securely mounted and uh, copper color amber. And here in the back, the, on the side of the truck right here, we have a reflector right here. This two is clean and clear, not cracked, they're loose or missing at all, securely mounted. So you're going to see something new called traffic monitoring devices. So we don't have sensors or uh, cameras on our truck. We just have mirrors. So we'll talk about the mirrors right here. I'll put this mirror right here and the mirror right here. First off, there's no, I'm going to point out that there's no missing nuts or bolts at all here. There's no missing nuts or bolts up here or up there. Also, these arms right here and right here, they're not twisted or sagging at all. They're tight to the body of the truck. The mirrors right here and the mirrors right here are clean and clear, not cracked at all, not loose or missing. The metal here is not cracked like presented. The mirror here and here is pretty mounted. Battery. Well, the battery box right here. Inside this battery box are a couple of batteries. But first, I'm going to inspect the box to make sure it's tight to the frame and it's not twisted, sagging, or loose at all. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented, or rusted through at all. There's no missing nuts or bolts. There's no loose or missing straps right here. I had removed this lid right here to make sure that the batteries are strapped in. They're not loose. There's no, they're not bulging, cracked, or leaking at all. Those electrical lines are securely plugged in. They're not loose at all. There's no corroded, exposed, or loose wires at all. The batteries and battery boxes are securely mounted. Fuel tank and def tank. So right here is my fuel tank. And this is my def tank right here. So starting with the fuel tank right here, I'd make sure it's securely mounted with these two metal straps. There has to be at least two. They're not loose or missing at all. Why is that? Well, there's no missing nuts or bolts at all. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented, or rusted through anywhere at all. These rubber grommets or seals right here, they're not worn through, loose or missing. I don't have metal rubbing on metal, which is bad. Also, I'm going to inspect this tank to make sure there's no broken or missing welds at all. I don't want to see that at all. The tank is not cracked, bent, or dented at all. This cap is on there tight. I would remove that cap to make sure the gas cap seal is there and the safety chain's in place. Then I'm going to make sure that these hoses are connected up here. There's no abrasions, bulging cuts, it's not cracked or leaking. No, the leaks all around here. This electrical line, too, is plugged in right here at the pump. There's no corroded, exposed, or loose wires at all. Nothing leaking on the top here, around here, around these welds, around the cap, and nothing puddling or dripping on the ground at all. The, the fuel tank here is securely mounted. The def tank is pretty much the same. I'm going to make sure it's like tight to the frame, it's not sagging or, 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 or loose anywhere at all. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented at all. Uh, for leaks, I'm going to make sure that these hoses are securely plugged in right up here. Inside here, they're not 
They're connected. They're not loose at all. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It's not cracked or leaking at all, anywhere at all. The, the electrical line's also plugged into as well. It's not loose. Uh, there's no corroded exposed or loose wires at all. Here, the plastic that's not cracked or leaking at all. This cap is on there tight. The safety chain is there. I'd actually remove this cap. There is a seal in place, just like the fuel tank. I'd make sure it's not worn through or loose or missing at all. The death tank is good to mount it. So now I have to three more train. So here on the side of the vehicle, um, they just want you to talk about the tractor frame as far as we know. So I'm gonna make sure that this frame is straight. It's not twisted or sagging with the ground at all. It's nice and level with the ground. I'm gonna inspect the metal inside and out here and all, all these cross movers here, here and back there. There's no missing nuts or bolts at all. There's no illegal welds at all. I don't want to see that at all. There's no rust holes at all. All these cross members are straight. They're not sagging or loose at all. The cross members in frame here is still mounted. And then, for if you're a um, Fast B, you would end it right there. But we're a combination vehicle, so we're going to talk about air and electrical lines and conductors. So starting up here, uh, the air hose here and here, I have red to red and blue to blue. They're, they're secured tight. They're not loose at all. The seal's in place. There's no dirt or debris stuck in between them at all. It's also not leaking at all. I'm going to fur lakes right here. It's also connected right here and right here. They're not loose or leaking or cracked at all. I don't want to see that at all. <clears throat> this hose is right here. There's no abrasions, bottles, cuts. They're not cracked or leaking at all. This electrical line is securely plugged in here with this spring safety latch. This safety latch is not loose or missing. This bracket is in place. There's no missing nuts or bolts. It's also plugged in right here. But here, there's no cut or exposed or corroded wires at all. And then I'm going to grab these lines to make sure there's enough slack for the turn of my trailer, but not so much slack dragging below the frame to get caught up in anything. The airlines here and this are, are uh, securely mounted. And then we go back here to talk about the airline, and connection, uh, airline and connectors here and also the electrical connectors here. So starting with the airlines right here, they're connected right here and right here and also right here and right here. These airlines are securely tied up to the frame. They're not hanging down here to get caught up in anything. That's great. I'm going to listen for air leaks all around these connection points right here. There's hoses. There's no abrasions. Ball just got the cracked or leaking at all. I'm going to listen for air leaks all along here, all the way down here. This electrical line is securely plugged in right here. It's not disconnected at all. There's no corroded, exposed, or loose wires at all. I'll make sure that that too is securely tied up. It's not going to hang down here and get caught up in anything. Fifth wheel skid plate. So we don't have a pencil hook or tow hitch. We have a skid plate here. So right here, this is my fifth wheel skid plate. So, but they also mentioned something about um, um, on here, locking and safety devices. So we're going to kind of cover a lot of things right here. I'm going to mention that this, uh, my fifth wheel skid plate um, uh, doesn't have a pin release. It's actually locked into place right here. Um, and it's actually securely mounted with this uh, platform right here. And all these mounting bolts right here and inside here too as well. You come around this way. All these mounting bolts inside here. Same over here and up here. So when I look at the skid plate first, I want to make sure that I want to make sure that the skid plate is not twisted or sagging at all. I'll make sure that this platform right here too is not cracked, bent, or dented. There's no broken or missing welds. These are all loose or missing mounting bolts up here or down here at all. These the platform is tight to the frame and this bracket is tight to the frame. It's not sagging or loose at all. The skid plate itself, there's no missing pins or cotter keys here. I checked to make sure it's properly greased here at the Zerks right here and right here. The Zerks right here and right here. The skid plate right here, it's not twisted, sagging or loose at all. It's not cracked, bent or dented. Um, we don't grease the top of our skid plate in this place. We have a plastic or a poly plate right here. We have a plastic poly plate underneath here. It's not worn through or missing at all. It allows for the safe turn of my trailer. So the locking devices that we have on on this fifth wheel are a couple, starting with the release arm right here. We don't have a safety, safety latch. We have spring tension. That spring is not loose or missing at all. It's locked in place in the drive position. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented. It's securely mounted. And then we have the locking jaw back here. It's pretty critical. So we'll come over here and talk about the locking jaw. This locking jaw right here is straight. It's not cracked, bent, or dented at all. It's also properly greased. And it's around the neck of the kingpin or, king or around the shank of the kingpin, exactly where it should be. So now we can move off to the kingpin, apron, and gap. So starting with the kingpin, the kingpin's inside here. 
this metal rod right here that goes down here and the head of the kingpin is below here. So that kingpin is straight. It's not crack bent or dented at all. The locking jaws are on the neck of the kingpin. That's great. That's exactly where I want it. Also, the head of the kingpin is not sheared off or missing at all. The kingpin there is securely mounted. And then we'll talk about the apron right here. The apron too is straight. It's not crack bent or dented. There's no broken or missing welds or missing nuts or bolts at all. It's securely mounted. And then the gap. When I talk about the gap here, I don't want to see a gap at all. If I saw a gap, that would tell me that my trailer is not securely connected. In my instance, the locking jaw is exactly where it should be above the head of the kingpin and around the neck of the kingpin. And there's no gap. My trailer is securely connected. So that covers that. So this, we covered a lot of that. A lot of what I said was also the locking and safety devices, like the release arm, the locking jaw, and how things were situated. So I explained that. So now we'll talk about the trailer only. Uh, landing gear and clearance. So what they want is they want to say that this, this foot for the landing gear is off the ground. It's not dragging on the ground at all. There's no rocks or debris to cause any damage at all. The metal's not cracked, bent, or dented. There's no missing nuts or bolts at all. And there's pins in place. It's not loose or missing. No missing nuts or bolts here or up here at all. The handle stowed away, stowed away right there. The landing gear is securely mounted. It was so much cooler this morning. <laughs> <It's> okay. So <laughs> here on the side of the trailer, we have we have DMT approved tape on the side of my trailer. It's all it covers at least fifty percent here on the side of my trailer. It's all clean and clear. None of it's loose or peeling at all. It's all securely mounted. And then we also have a light reflector right here and up here. A light reflector here. The license plate light right there. ABS light and. And a uh, uh, great uh, clearance light right there. So all of the lenses are clean, clear, not cracked at all. There's no loose or hanging wires at all. They're all secured tight and uh, securely mounted. So I have the proper color up here with the zamber. Proper color up here in the, in the back of the trailer is red. Also, this ABS light. If for whatever reason I saw that ABS light on my trailer, that means I don't have ABS, but I still have normal braking. I just get my trailer serviced as soon as possible. Now we'll come back here. So here, uh, I have DOT approved tape on the wheel wells, up on the ramps, and down below. It covers 100% of the visual space back here. And then all those, uh, all the clearance lights and brake lights back here are clean and clear, not cracked. I don't have any loose or missing lenses, loose or hanging wires at all. They're all securely mounted, proper color, red. Now I'm going to do the, the lights operation check for all my external lights. So I'm going to come up here and start the vehicle and turn my lights on. The vehicle should be running when you do the light check. or whatever, uh, right next to the light switch, there's this button called MIR. If you push that in, that'll dry off the mirrors. If you want to see you safely exit the vehicle, you can jump out or move, go forward on it. So always maintain three points of contact. So now we're going to check all the external lights, starting with that. The headlights right here, my low beam lights, they're on and they're working. My clearance lights here, over here, on the mirrors, and on top of the cab, they're all working. The lights back here are all working. The brake lights, the clearance lights are working right here, right here, up here, up here, also down here they're working, working over here. Once more, if this light is on, you would say that I still have no more braking. I'd get my trailer serviced as soon as possible. For your test, it should be off though. 
The lights back here are all, all working. I go on the right side of the trailer here and inspect all those lights too as well, along the side of the right side of the trailer. Just pointing at them to say that they're working. So now we're going to go to the high beam lights. Lights, they're working, they're brighter. Also, uh, my left turn signal light is working here, up here, and back here. And my left turn signal light is working back here in the back of the trailer. Now I'm going to do the right side. And also back here. Now I'm going to do the hazard lights. I'll cancel the turn signal light. I'll turn on the hazard lights. The hazard lights are working on up on the front. They're also working here on the side. The side of the tractor right here too as well. They're also working on the back of the tractor right there. Also working back here in the back of the trailer. So now I'm going to do the brake lights. Here's what I'm, I'm going to ask the examiner. Hey, can you help me out with the brake lights? I'm going to cancel the uh, the hazard lights and press the brake pedal. Give me the thumbs up if it's if they're working on the trailer and the truck. go to the uh, the end cab right now we're doing the in vehicle and engine start so the first thing you're going to uh, do with the examiners you're going to show them how to safely start a vehicle you'll stay and pull out if needed the trailer brakes engaged and the parking brakes engaged my truck is in neutral if you're not in a manual you'll kind of click up the automatic and you'll point to the end you'll say your trucks in neutral and then you'll say, I can start the truck. All right. So once you start the truck, the very, it's new for 2023 is the new air brake check. It's actually got four parts to it. So think of it as Gale. Governor cutoff switch, air loss test, low air warning, alarm test, an emergency brake test, G-A-L-E. So we're gonna start out with the governor cutoff switch. I'll explain to the, the examiner at this time that in my shop or in life, I would chalk my wheels. But for this instance, for the test, I'm gonna gently press the brake pedal here to hold the truck in place. My truck is in neutral here and here. It cannot be in gear. I'm gonna go ahead and release the parking brake and the trailer brake. And at this time, I'm going to give it the, uh, the motor a little bit of gas here to get these needles to climb to the governor cutoff. So that should occur somewhere between 125 PSI and 140 PSI.
heard my governor cut off switch. I saw the sniff of air and dust on both sides of my vehicle. And I'll mention that my governor cut off switch works and it cut off right around 125 PSI. So now for this, I'm gonna do the air loss uh, portion of the test. So to do that, I'm gonna uh, uh, press and hold the brake pedal. I don't really have to press into the brake pedal. I just press down to the point of resistance and a little bit more and I leave it there. I'm gonna turn the vehicle off and back to the on position. When my gauges settle here, I'll say I'll time myself for one minute. In a class A setup, I shouldn't lose four PSI in that one minute. If I'm a class B, I shouldn't lose three PSI in that one minute. So I'm gonna press and hold this for the longest minute of my life. I might use my time productively and I might look at my list to make sure I didn't miss anything on the outside or overlook something or gloss something over. So I'll use that time accordingly. But, and watch my time kind of tick by. So now it's been one minute now and I did not lose four PSI in this class A setup. And if, remember if I were in a class B setup, I didn't lose three PSI. So now I'm doing the low air alarm warning. I'm gonna pump the brake pedal here and somewhere between 80 and 60 PSI, I should both hear and see the low air alarm. They both hear and see the low air alarm right around 75 PSI. So now I'm gonna do the, uh, the, the emergency brake test. I'm gonna continue pumping the brake pedal here and somewhere between 40 and 20 PSI, both my trailer brake and my parking brake, they'll pop out. Right at about uh, 40 PSI, both my parking brake and trailer brake or my emergency brakes, they've engaged. I need to start the truck and pull against them to make sure they're holding. So I'm gonna start the truck, put my truck into gear and pull against them. My truck should move forward. In this instance, I'm gonna walk out the clutch, but if you're an automatic, you just kind of gently uh, press the gas pedal like such, nice and softly. My emergency brakes hold. So the, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, resupply the air back up to a safe level. Both my primary and secondary tanks should be somewhere between 90 and 120 PSI. tanks are back up to the safe level. They're just above 90 PSI climbing. Do that for the parking brake. I'm gonna put it in gear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna release the trailer brake. I'm gonna leave this one engaged, excuse me. Then I'm gonna walk out the clutch. My foot's not on the brake pedal. I'm just gonna walk this clutch out or gently tap, tap the gas pedal here. And if I'm in an automatic, I'll walk this clutch out here. And I'll stay, say that my parking brake holds. So now I'm gonna do the trailer brake to do that. I'm going to release the parking brake and leave the trailer brake engaged. I'll put it in gear, pull against the trailer. My trailer brake holds the vehicle and also uh, my trailer is securely connected, I'll say. So now I'll do the service brake. I'll release this and I'll, these are both released now. I'm going to leave them alone. My truck is in gear. I'm going to gently pull forward and apply the service brake. Service brake works, doesn't pull on either side. So now I'm gonna do um, the light indicators. First on the light indicators, I wanna indicate and point out that I don't have any warning lights, such as my ABS light or my deaf light um, telling me that there's something wrong. Also, my gauges here, they're, they're all reading at a, an appropriate level. They're not dropping or ri rising quickly. My temperature gauge is where it needs to be. and my battery is also charging. 
So now I'm going to do the left indicator right here. I can see it; it's working. I'm going to do the right in right indicator. I can see it; it's working. You can see the hazards; they're both working. And my high beam indicator, it too is working. All my dash lights are working, and as I mentioned, I don't see any warning lights uh, uh, stating that there's a problem. Emergency equipment here. Right here I have my spare fuses. They're unused and unopened. Behind the passenger seat in that red box are three DOT reflective triangles. They're not broken or cracked. None are missing. They're all the proper color, red and orange. My fire extinguisher is secured behind the seat here with that latch. That latch is not loose, it's locked. The uh, extinguisher is not cracked or leaking. The safety pin's in place. And the needle's in the green zone, so it's telling me it's fully charged. So now I'm gonna do the, uh, the windshield and traffic monitoring devices. So new for 2023, for new vehicles, they have cameras or they have sensors. We don't have sensors or cameras, we just have mirrors. So the mirrors right here, right here, right there, and also right here, they're all clean and clear and they're all adjusted to me. My windshield is clean and clear, free of debris, nothing on my dash, no legal stickers, and there's no signs that the seal's been leaking at all. So now, now I'm gonna do the, the washers and the wipers and washers. To do that, I'm just gonna press in the washer fluid here and explain that the washer fluid is fully charged, it cleans the glass. The blades themselves are tight to the window. They're not loose, not torn, cracked, or missing. And then I'm gonna do the heater and defrost. To do that, I'm gonna turn this on to max air like such. And then I'm gonna make sure that this side over here is at the heater and defrost section right here. It can't be anywhere else. It can't be down here, it has to be up here. I feel air up here and I feel air down here. Both the heater and defrost work. Now I'll make it comfortable for both of us. The last thing on your list is you get to toot your horns. So you've done a great job. So this is the best thing in the world. For an automatic, you get to uh, use the city horn. You only have one. It's not so impressive, but for you manual guys, get to go to town, freeway horn works.